so, so this is it. Um, and I won't really act it, or maybe I will. I don't. Okay. Um, Well, in a sense. <laughs> I think I'm dying right now. If he does, I get his guitar. That's all I'm saying. The story of yourself is told by you each day. It's how we form identity and differentiate ourselves from our surroundings and find meaning there within, an organizing abstraction with clear beginning, middle, and end. Thus, we are but narrative, a tale and nothing more. A, a, a sea without a shore, a key without a door, but suicide doth call truth out and spots the bluff for what it is, a fluffy bit of nothing, only pictures in our heads. Uh, my friends and family, it is with mirth that I do pin these final words to you. I should say, speak for this contraption hears me perfectly and writes it out for thee. Grieve not, for I feel nothing but relief, as secretly I know you do as well, in knowing that my troubled minds now cease to bring us all such further misery. Two people, truly, willingly in love, must give up something of themselves. And that's the gift most men are scared to make. It, they keep it locked inside where it withers and dies, and thus they never know true love, just as facsimiles which they seek and seek again in meaningless, repeating ways. Bill Inge said that, for I am not that wise. I spent my life repeating pretty lies, like telling girls I loved them when I knew it wasn't true, and know they knew it too, but once they left, I started to believe my own untruths, and heaved with crocodile sobs the way spoiled children do, when they can't have the toy they want, though once they have it, they want it not. I am one such child, it's but illusion I'm a man, I'm overripe and rot. Oh, Bessie, I did not comprehend that it takes a certain strength to love without humiliation, it takes a person big enough to live within a whole new dimension, those souls brave enough to know the task of being loved and not to fear it is a burden. I was much too weak. I lacked the generosity to love. To give the gift of my most private self, I thought would somehow lessen me. Me, a man devoid of anything at all. Such ignorance is damnable, and that is how I feel. I'm damned to know just what I've missed and lacking love of any kind, save that of self, of which I'm very blessed. <laughs> Again, I'm plagiarizing William Minch. He died exactly one month from my birth, yet knows me more than anyone on earth. Uh, the authorities will handle my body. They've just been notified. In fact, I should get to it before they are right outside. My will is all laid out. My writing has been burned. Memorabilia has been pitched. And sorting through it all, I learned that I am quite a hoarder. Uh, I think I kept all that stuff in order to give my life meaning, a sense of accomplishment. And to say, look, I was here, and here, and here's the people that I love, and the ones who loved me. And so you see, my life was not in vain. And then it starts raining, and I picture tiny hydrogen atoms attached to oxygen. And I gaze out at the clouds and sparrows, and it all starts becoming too much. This world never knew I existed. Still, I had a pretty good run. We live in a lovely world, even if, as I expect, it's not but the dying dreams inside the mind of a suicide. And... There's only one way to find out, so wish me luck. Uh, and then someone would bring me a shotgun, and the band would kick in, and it would go, uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, oh, well, it's hard to sing with a shotgun in my mouth, but I'm gonna give it, give it a try. You see, I'm all over you, and the rest of it, too. It's too damn late I'm no damn good for you 
sunset, kissing me goodbye. Cradle my body with tears in your eyes. A whisper and a memory will kiss me goodbye. In ten seconds, I'm gonna blow.